just want to thank all of you for being here today. It's inspiring to see so many progressive advocates, elected officials, and candidates working hand in hand to make this state everything that it can be. As a matter of fact, I gotta have a picture of this. Hold on. Just a few weeks ago, in this very same building, our Republican friends said their convention was focused on unifying their broken party. But in order to do, unify their party, they had to divide our state by pitting one manor against another and playing politics with real people's lives. More than their substance, I was struck by their tone. Negative, accusatory, bitter, defensive, intolerant. Folks, we can do better than that. Yeah. We can do better than that. Yeah. And my message to you is that we have to be better than that. Yeah. So then, to, instead of giving you a mind burning speech tonight of attacks and examples of mismanagement by this governor, and yes, there have been many of them, <laughs> I want to instead ask you to set aside your democratic credentials for a moment. I want to speak to you as Mainers, united in our optimism for our state's potential and committed to our state's future. These are very serious times for me. Our resolve is being tested, our values challenged, our very identity as a state hangs in the balance. Governor LePage, in the example he has set, is changing what it means to be from Maine. This goes way beyond partisan politics. It's about who we are and what we want our state to be. The Maine that I know, our Maine, is a place of community where neighbors know each other and look out for one another. Our Maine is a place where we value tolerance and we listen and respect everyone's opinion even if we disagree with their opinion. Our Maine is a place where Democrats, Republicans, and Independents pride themselves on their ability to come together to find solutions for our greatest challenges. The Maine that I know, our Maine, is a safe and healthy place to live and raise a family. Our Maine is a place where people want to be and where there is opportunity for all. It's a place full of rugged, hard-working, industrious people. But our Maine isn't the Maine that Governor LePage sees. No. And it's my goal is to unite the state of Maine and take our Maine back. I know the pressure is on. Too many people are out of work, are working too hard for too little. Too many students are saddled with debt. Too many schools are underfunded and understaffed. Too many children have little to eat. Too many bridges are crumbling. And too many entrepreneurs have incredible ideas but not enough capital or access to tools and connectivity that they need to grow. I know we all have our eyes set on November, but my message to you tonight is that November is only the beginning. Because just winning this election 
alone won't solve all of our problems. Winning doesn't matter if it isn't a catalyst for real change. And meaningful, positive change is the only thing that will move this state forward. We afford to simply reject the LePage way and only go back to the old way. It's our time to forge a new path that meets the challenges of this time. We will start by cleaning up some of the unfinished businesses. We must honor our veterans and ensure that they get the respect and care and opportunity that they deserve. continue to put their lives on the line every day, fighting for our freedoms. We, they have had our back for a number of years, and I'll have their back as well as governor. That is why, on the first day I take the oath of office, I will submit legislation to expand access to life-saving health care for the 70,000 low-income people. Yeah. save our taxpayers millions of dollars, hold down health care costs, and create jobs all at the same time. Yeah. All of which are things that may sorely need after three and a half years of Governor LePage's failed policies and politics that has left us behind the rest of the country in job growth. I will work with Republicans and Democrats to raise the minimum wage just as I did when I was president of the Maine Senate. Yay! Many people support it. Legislators in both parties support it. And just recently, listen carefully now, even Mitt Romney supports it. <laughs> And we are committed to the notion that work should pay more than just getting than public assistance, then we need to put our money where our mouth is and get it done. We will also work to ensure economic security and close the wage gap that women in Maine continue to face today. what my opponents tell you. We will unequivocally support and protect the woman's right to choose. Yeah. And we will work to restore the funding for critical family planning services that was vetoed by the governor. for the state and for Maine government. One that's not developed and written by and for lawyers and lobbyists, but one that's developed for the people of the state of Maine. We will create an economy that works for everyone, just not the ultra-wealthy. We'll invest in our schools and our children. We'll stop with all the testing and instead let teachers do what they do best and And we'll invest in our infrastructure, in innovation, and in small businesses.
which are the backbones of our economy, will make me a national leader in renewable energy. of creating jobs here in the state of Maine. And we'll promote our farms and our fisheries to make Maine the food basket of New England. And we'll seek out the best and the brightest to bring into a new administration people with big ideas and even bigger drive to see their government work. look to our state employees, those working on the front line, to help us make government more effective and transparent. <laughs> we need to change the policy, the direction of the state of Maine. But that's not, not all that we need to change. We need to change the way that people view our elected officials to change the way we do politics here in Maine. That means bringing people together, listening to those who disagree with us, not slamming our fist on the table when we don't get what we want. It means, it means refusing the temptation to rake our colleagues over the coals simply to score political points in tomorrow's newspapers. It means resisting the scorcher tactic that poisoned too many relationships and undermines good politics before they have a chance to take hold. We need people to be confident in and even proud of our leaders again. And I think we need to lead by example to earn that confidence of the people here in the state of Maine. <laughs> if elected governor, I will ask both parties and the people of Maine to take a much needed break from the politics we've seen over the last few years and instead work together, not on winning the next election, but on winning the future for me. Because I've learned, learned a long time ago, whether I'm serving as president of the Senate in the evenly divided Senate 14 years ago, or in my time in Congress, no one party has a monopoly on good ideas. But to meet this worthy goal, we need to first to build trust, but most of all, be willing to take the risk of trying new ideas. Take risk was what I did when I first got involved in politics a number of years ago. I first ran for office when I was just 24 years old. Back then, I never imagined that one day I would be a congressman or a candidate for the governor of the state of Maine. After all, I grew up in a small Maine rural town. I was one of six kids in a large working class family. We weren't lawyers. We were all mill workers. We did live in a population center, as most governors have. We lived in Medway, a very rural community. We worked hard for what we had and lived modestly. Like my father before me, my grandfather before him, after high school I went to work at Great Northern Paper Company. Maybe it was punching a time clock for so many years, or maybe it was the solidarity that you built working side by side with people who lived through pink slips, who lived through layoffs, who lived through picket lines. But the blue call, the blue in my collar, instilled in me the values of hard work, community, responsibility, and an opportunity for everyone, not just the privileged few. I first ran for office even though the odds were against me, even though 
I knew it meant a great sacrifice I'd have to give. But I ran because I was driven by the passion for change. And I'm still driven today by that same passion. Because we can't let the past dictate our future. We can't let the old battles, the old viewpoints, and the past hardships stand in the way of progressive and opportunities for people here in the state of Maine. The world is constantly changing, and we must be ready to adapt to that change. We must be looking forward, looking for the challenges and trying how to fix it. We can no longer stand the status quo. And if you elect me, Governor, we will make that change. listen to your stories and talk with Mainers from all walks of life to create a path forward. Together, we will give the people of the Maine the government that they deserve and that they want. Yeah! Now, don't get me wrong, we're not going to stop disagreeing. We're not going to give up our values that we hold near and dear. But we can't stop the divisiveness. We can't stop the inflammatory rhetoric. And we can't stop being so quick to think the worst of people and play on the people's fear. We can do better and we can be better as Mainers. about Democrats or Republicans. It's about Maine's future. It's about all of you and the people who make our Maine great. So if you are a veteran and if you're able to, please stand up and remain standing. officer, a state trooper, a paramedic, a nurse, a doctor, or any member of public safety, please stand and remain standing. election is about. You all represent the idea that Maine's best days are ahead of us. You all represent the vision that we are all in this together. And now, over the next six months, in the four years that follow, our resolve will be tested. And our values will be challenged. But we will boldly take on every challenge. And I'm confident that together, we will win.
want to show you all something. Some of you may remember this. <laughs> it's my lunch bucket I carried with me for over 29 years when I worked at Great Northern Paper Company in East Millinocket. For 12 years, this lunch bucket has been sitting prominently in front of my desk in Washington, D.C. As a constant reminder, never to forget and stop working for the hard-working men and women of this state of Maine. Thank you very much.